For the majority of the base coats, I use Army Painter Speed Paints, and for the most part, I'm trying to choose a darker color. This will allow me to add brighter highlights. I may even try mixing Grim Black with some of these colors in the future to darken them even more. As an aside, I had actually finished the base coats on this pair of miniatures four and a half weeks ago, but due to various circumstances, I was forced into a hiatus from painting or hobbying in any form. For the plate armor, I'll be trying something I've never done before, and that being non-metallic metal effect as opposed to the metallic paints. For this, I chose Pallid Bone as the base color, because I primed the model in black with gray and white zenithal highlights, the shadowed areas will be a good bit darker than the lighter surface. If you've seen my previous videos, you know that my workhorse brushes have been the Army Painters Regiment and Detail brushes, and now with the majority of the base coats completed, it's time I unsheath the expensive monstrosity known as the Windsor Newton Series 7 Size 2 Watercolor Brush. As a disclaimer, be wary of purchasing expensive brushes like this, as there are a lot of cheap imitations out there. I used the sample palette of Army Painter paints that I created to choose highlight colors I'll be using. I do this anytime I choose colors unless it's a combination I know I already like. I decided to use Arid Earth as the first highlight for the plate mail armor. In retrospect, trying to do a new technique on top of using a new brush that is significantly larger than what I'm accustomed to was probably not the brightest idea. Sometimes you just have to lace those Nikes up and just do it. I mix arid earth and matte white at a 1 to 1 ratio and then add a thinner coat over the previous highlights. I follow a similar approach to the shield using pure red then building up an additional highlight over top of it with Mars red. For the hilt and outer banding of the shield, I use actual metallic paints. I figured what better way to compare how good or bad my first non-metallic metal attempt would compare to my use of regular metallic paints, and to uh, have them both on the same miniature. I decided to try glazing Fire Lizard over all of the armor, and in retrospect I regret doing this as this gave the armor a very yellowish hue, and coupled with the lightning of the sword, it left me with a lot of yellow coloration. I mix Mr. Weathering solvent and multi-black oil and apply it over the miniatures. Because it's diluted with the solvent, wicking away excess is easy. If you end up with any really bad stains, you can use pure solvent to remove it. 
As a note, be sure you don't use your good brushes when using this product as a solvent can lead to damaging the bristles. As a final note, the bases that came with these miniatures were too small and I had to replace them with larger spare bases that I had. Even if I trimmed the molding down to the feet, the width of the stance of the figures would have still been too great. This is the final result. See the informational link in the top right corner for how I did the bases. For my first time doing not metallic metal and painting with the massive size 2 Windsor & Newton brush, I think it came out okay. I'll need more practice in general and on top of getting used to the new brush. As for lessons learned for non-metallic metal, I think I understand the basic concepts, though I think it needs additional highlights and more darker shadows. I also don't think I should have put that final glaze over the top of it. That's going to wrap it up for today. I hope you learned something or were inspired to start or add to your own collection. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you like the content in this video and would like to see more, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm Jim with Wicked Wood Miniatures. I'm truly grateful for your time, and I bid you a fond farewell. Till my next video.